Hello everybody, my name is Nihil and I'm back with my second installment in my Let's Learn How to Use Hammer in sort of a more advanced way series. Uh, I was told to cut to the chase quicker, so I'm not going to tell you the story of how I got into a fist fight last night with three male prostitutes across the street. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, let's let's actually do cut to the chase here. So, um, this one is actually going to focus on kind of uh, arches and curves, using the arch tool and how that kind of stuff really works. A lot of newer people that, once again, they know how to like put down square brushes, cubes, in other words, they, they struggle to make nice looking arches. So let's talk about that. Uh, as you can see, I prepared a little uh, level here. Before we jump in, one tiny thing just for repetition, just because it's super important. Again, I just want to know, like, this is very basic, but just notice how I've made this. I've used the no draw brush on every single side that isn't you know, that that, it, that wouldn't be uh, visible to the actual player. So that's very important that you do that uh, just to make everything more optimized and to both the compile time as well as actually uh, the FPS in the game. And again, um, when you use a texture here, notice how the texture, how this works out. This is very important if you're going to use textures that to make sure they line up 100%. And then notice this is kind of a trim up here and notice this texture. And these are two different textures but um you know find textures like that that do this one and this one these two they work together okay so you need to have an eye for that all right let's get to archers though so the first thing we need really need to do <clears throat> if we do go into this uh, block tool mode here or shift b is to select the arch tool so if we just do this hit return we get this little dialog if you just for now just hit ok the first thing you need to notice here is that it actually it always comes down from a top down perspective so this doesn't work this is basically an arch from uh, from the top view okay from here so what does that mean it means we need to rotate the whole thing kinda sucks but that's just the way this tool works. So the first thing we really need to do is we need to understand how large this is, this hole. And, and for this, it helps to work with, with like even numbers. So as you can see here on the screen, I used one, two, eight for both dimensions. So that means what we can do while still having the arch tool selected really is just to make it one, two, eight by one, two, eight anywhere here in the top down view and this will give us the correct one i also know for a fact that my walls are always 16 units high uh, sorry wide i mean uh, again that's being a measurement unit that you should probably memorize uh, because it's a very good base value leaves you with good looking walls so 16 so we can make this 16 so as you can see now we have this kind of a piece assembly uh, line thing going on here where it's just being made right here and then we'll have to rotate it into place so let's hit return now brings up the arch properties dialog the very first thing i do is i hit circle and preview and this just allows us to get to catch kind of a, a nice look on on, on the, uh, the, the 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 object we're really working on here um and let's go through them uh, one by one through these five settings here so wall width um if it's uh basically set it to your original dimensions or something along those lines because um, if you do set it to something very low, what you will get is this kind of thing. And we don't really want that here. Um, it has to be at least half of your dimensions, but I like to be on the safe side. It's just easier to, to memorize that way. So I just put in the same thing uh, that's up here. So 128. Um, the number of sides is very important, maybe the most important setting here. You want to find a balance between, you don't want it to look like CS1.6 uh, or source-like, for example, or if you're not working in Counter-Strike, you know, it just looks really dated. If you're going to do an arch like this, it would look extremely blocky, and that's not good. At the same time, you don't really want to go with, you know, like this, because it's a ton of work, and it's going to slow the game down as well. So... I would suggest maybe 12. Um, now 12, you notice this is 12 on the whole circle. So that's not really enough. Um, I was talking about 12 in the, in the top semicircle, so double that, okay, so 24. And this creates 12 in the upper half of the circle, and that's what I meant. Um, so just something to be careful about. Um, but you can use uh, you know, 32 here, or you could use 18 or 16 or something, right? You can play around with that. It's just important that you get a, a, a perfect straight 
line here that's horizontal and a perfect vertical line here because we're going to work in a, in a kind of a quarter circle up here and uh, it, that makes it a lot easier. So I hit the circle button, obviously that sets it to 360 here as far as the arc is concerned, and that's good. And then these two need to be zero, so let's hit OK. And this is our template. Okay, this is just a template thing. This is just nothing we're going to end up using in the map, just something to work with for now. So what we do, first of all, we just rotate this by 90 degrees. And if, if this doesn't look like this, if this doesn't snap and you're having problems, if it looks like this and you're having problems rotating it exactly 90 degrees, um, there is a setting in the options here that does it somewhere. Uh, default to 15 degree rotations. You need to check that. All right. So this is a template. So I, I wouldn't even put it in like this. Um, I would actually just put it somewhere like just here, for example, and then align it. So if you are going to take a look, this is our whole cutout. And this is here. This here is a template. So why are we doing this and how are we doing this? Well, first of all, let's remove all the unnecessary vertices and, and uh, faces here rather from, from this whole thing. So let's get rid of this. So what are we doing here? This is going to be essentially the negative space of what we want. So what does that mean? That means that we really want um, to fill in these edges, these corners here. Well, how do we do that? Well, the, the important thing that you need to understand about the arch tool is that what it creates, the vertices here, they really all are on the grid, okay? They're on the f grid uh, one, so on the, on the smallest grid, but they are on the grid. So that means what we can simply do is we can simply select a brush like this. We can shift, drag it, we can make it smaller, and we can just go shift V, and we can kind of just build our brushes from here. And I do slices. So start out with this slice for example okay like this and hit uh well select shift s does the same thing i sometimes i use the mouse for these things which is not strictly speaking efficient but whatever and then basically we just trace this whole thing and you can do this really quickly there's really not much to it it's very simple and uh, very foolproof and what you will be uh left with is a really cool arch and if you were going to do this, a lot of newbies actually do this by hand. So they just kind of guesstimate, basically. They just don't use the template, the arch that we were using here. And that just doesn't work uh, most of the time. So the last slice is always a, tri uh, well, a triangle shape. Uh, so a, a wedge, I guess. And that's it. Actually misplaced the last vertex, but there we go. And that's it. And that's all you need to do. And at this point, you can already delete your template if you feel like it. And notice how this created a really, really smooth and nice circle shape. And then all we need to do is we, we select them. What I like to do is I like to hit uh, Control G and that just groups it up. So now this is a group. And then you probably guessed it. We can actually change our grid. Shift drag and you can hit Control I or rather control L in this case, I, it's always trial and error for me to flip it on the right axis. And now we have a sort of an arch. And again, notice how this is a really nice rounded circular shape, uh, already starting to look pretty good, but things we can do here is of course, as always work with the textures, okay? Again, um, what we need to do, these textures are broken right now and texture detail, making sure textures line up as much as they can, wherever they can, does make the difference between a good looking map and a not so good looking map in my experience. So we take this, hold alt, we talked about this in the first video, right click, select this, right click, select this, right click, you know, same thing. And then same thing from this side for the other half. Bam. Do this for this side. I think you'll catch the uh, idea. You don't actually have to select these. You can just kind of go over like this. But when there's a curve in the surface, this method doesn't work and you need to select the new face. So what I like to do just to be safe is I like to select every slice over and over. And it also gives you the red overlay here, which is nice. So you can actually tell where a surface is starting and where the brush side is stopping. So now we have this aligned. And of course we need to do the insides. Uh, for the inside, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky sometimes because as you can see, we don't really want that, right? This, this stuff to show up here. So if we were to continue that, it would look kind of bad. Um, so there's multiple ways to solve that. And this is the point where, as far as I know, there's not really anything you can do automatically. You, it's probably around like the time that you do want to 
maybe try and kind of use your um, intuition a little bit here. All right, so this is the sort of finished arch here. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I think that looks relatively decent. Now, before you basically start working on something else, it's important to talk about optimization. And the way we're gonna optimize this is gonna hold Control T and it tells you uh, that it's it's turned this into a funk detail. Uh, we're just gonna hit apply and close out. And all that does is it speeds up the compilation time of your map. It's really important to do this with all your smaller brushes like this. Um, it's really, really, really uh, and it, the most important and basic step in optimization. Uh, these brushes here are big and they do block a lot of sight. So if there's a player here and there's a player here, um, you, these brushes would block you two from seeing each other. So it's very important not to turn these into funk details because funk details will not block visibility. Okay. So the rule of thumb is if you are, um, if you are going to uh, have big brushes uh, that also block a lot of uh, sight lines, then leave them as regular brushes. But if you do have brushes that are small, small pieces like this, that are, as the name says, details, then what you need to do is you need to make them funk details. Very important. And the uh, best way to do this, if you have a finished map or something, you can simply go here into the auto vis groups and you can just hide funk details and then you can just look around your level. And if there's anywhere on your level, there's like some small brushes left, like stairs or classic cases of, of funk details, then you need to select them and then you need to actually hide them. Um, all right, let's bring those back in. Now, as I said, the more modern way to do this, if you don't want this uh, for a specific reason, uh, is to actually use a prop static here, all right? A prop static, and then if you just browse and search for arch, if we actually manage to spell that correctly, uh, we can find some arches. Now, you're gonna have to find out what your actual dimensions are, okay? Um, because that's not always that simple. Now, in our case, it was 128, but finding an arch that's 128 in size is not necessarily so easy. As you can see, there's some here in Italy that are 146 by 160, 149 by 120, 157 by 160. And I do believe the last number here is the width. And that's what we're looking for primarily here. Um, but none of them are 128. So it's kind of awkward uh, a lot of times. So uh, in this case, if you were going to use a prop, I would suggest you place the prop first and then make the rest of the arch uh, according to that. Let's see if we can find something that looks like maybe maybe this one. It's probably a little bit too big, but let's see. Well, actually, it fits pretty well. Right, so just use your judgment here. Um, right now, uh, as far as visuals and aesthetics are concerned, this thing, uh, the problem with this is that it's so very low. So it's it's a little bit too low and needs to be higher. So we could shift this up and then shift the rest of the walls. But as you can see, it's a very nice uh, visual upgrade over just a raw kind of brushwork uh, thing. But of course, you still need to do the cutout that we just did for this otherwise this isn't going to work of course if you're going to cover um if you're going to cover something up uh with a prop uh you don't really need all the details so we we used all these um these brushes here and if we're going to cover it up like this we might have uh, just used four maybe instead of six or eight okay but it doesn't really matter as long as you make them funk details do not forget to do that and everything should be great um now i was Right now, I was doing a circle shape. It was 128 by 128, so it was a circle. But you can experiment with ellipses, so, uh, you know, stretch it out. Uh, in general, I wouldn't, as long as your architecture, I, you know, architectural ideas and your references don't have that. What I would go with is circular arches, because they just tend to look the most standard and the nicest, I'd say. But yeah, um, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for the feedback. My name is Nihil and bye-bye.